Hello everyone! Welcome to Future Handy's channel. For today's tutorial, I will discuss on how to simplify radical expressions. For our objective, we will simplify radical expressions using the laws of radicals. I have here four laws of radicals. The first one is the nth root of a raised to n should be equal to a. Next, the nth root of a times b is equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Next, we have the nth root of a over b which is equal to the nth root of a over nth root of b. And the last one is the mth root of the nth root of a will be equal to the m times nth root of a, which is also equal to the nth root of mth root of a. So later, I'll give you an example on how to use this loss of radicals to simplify the given radical expressions. But for now, please remember that the simplified form of radical expression would require, first, no prime factors of radical has an exponent equal or greater than the index. Second, no radical contains a fraction. And third, no denominator contains a radical sign. Now, let's begin with our first law which says that if the nth root of a raised to n, it should be equal to a. So it means that the index and the exponent should be equal. If that is the case, then whatever the radical is, that will be the answer. So let's see this expression using exponential form. If I will rewrite this into exponential form, it will be a raised to 1 over n raised to n in which we will apply the loss of exponents, just multiply the two exponents here, then we have a raised to n over n. And n divided by n gives us 1, which means we have a raised to 1 or simply a. So let's have the following examples. First, we have the nth root of 4 raised to 3. Since our index is equal to the exponents, then... If we use the exponential form, it will be equal to 4 raised to 1 third raised to n, in which we will multiply the two exponents. So we have 4 raised to 3 over 3. And 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. Therefore, we have here 4 raised to 1, which is equal to 4. So if we use the first law of radical, then this one will simply equal to 4. Another example, we have the square root of 64. So to simplify square root of 64, let us think of a factors of 64 in which the exponent is equal to 2. Therefore, 64 here can be 8 square since 8 square is equal to 64. Now that our index is equal to 2 and the exponent is equal to 2 as well, then the answer for square root of 64 is equal to Next, let us have our second law. It says that if the expression is equal to the nth root of a times b, then it is equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. So let's see this expression as exponential form. So we have a b raised to 1 over n, then it is equal to a raised to 1 over n times b raised to 1 over n. So let us have the following examples. First, we have here a square root of 50. Since our index here is 2, then let us think of a factors of 50 in which we can simplify it with exponent of 2. So for now, the factors of 50 will be 25 times 2, in which 25 can be simplified as 5 square, in which 5 square is equal to 25. So we have square root of 5 square times square root of 2. So using the first law, if our index and our exponent here is equal, then the answer for this one will be 5 square root of 
2. No need to simplify square root of 2 since it is the simplest form of it. Next example, we have the cube root of 32 times x raised to 5. So we have here this expression. So again, we will think of a factor of 32 in which the exponent will be 3. So from 32 and x raised to 5, let us e express it as 8 times 4, which is still equal to 32, and x cubed times x squared, which is still equal to x raised to 5. This expression is equal to the cube root of 2 cubes. 2 cubes is equal to 8 times x cubed here times 4 times x squared. So if you notice, I combined here an expression with exponent of 3. So from here, our answer will be 2x times cube root of 4x squared, since we can simplify this one. So from here, I just use the first law in which it tells that if the index and the exponents are equals, so let us just consider the base. So from here, our base is 2 and x, that's why our answer is this one. So let us have the third one. We have the nth root of a over b, which is equal to the nth root of a over nth root of b. Make sure that b should not be equal to 0 to avoid this expression to be undefined. So let us have these examples. We have the nth root of negative 64 over x raised to 6. So applying this law, we will obtain the cube root of negative 64 over the cube root of x raised to 6. So for us to simplify this one, let us think of the exponential form of negative 64 in which the exponent is equal to 3, which is our index. As well as to our denominator, let us find the factors of x raised to 6 in which one of the exponent is equal to 3. Therefore, we have here the cube root of negative 4 cubes over the cube root of x squared raised to 3. So in which negative 4 cubes is equal to negative 64 and x squared raised to 3 is equal to x raised to 6. So from here, our index and exponents are equal. So let us just consider their base. Therefore, the answer for this one is negative 4 over x squared. Let us have our second example. We have here the square root of x raised to 24 over 9. Again, from our law, it says that it is equal to the square root of x raised to 24 over square root of 9. So let us have the exponential form of these two expressions to simplify the radical. So we have square root of x raised to 12 times 2 in which x raised to 12 times 2 is equal to x raised to 24 over square root of 3 square, in which 3 square is equal to 9. So again, applying our first law, in which the index and the exponent is equal, then we will just get their base. Therefore, the answer for this one is x raised to 12 over n. So let us have our last law which indicates that nth root of nth root of a is equal to the m times nth root of a, which is also equal to the nth root of mth root of a. So let us have these examples. We have the sixth root of 4. So from here, let us reduce the index. Let us make it as the cube root of the square root of 4, in which 3 times 2 is still equal to 6. And since we know that 4 is a perfect square, then let us put it inside the square root. So from here, let us simplify the root. So we have the cube root of the square root of 2 squared, in which 2 squared is equal to 4. Let us apply the first law in which the index and the exponent is equal. Then let us consider the base. So from 6 square root of 4, the answer will be the cube root of 2. Next example, we have the cube root of square root of 27. Since we know that 27 is not a perfect square, then let us use this law in which this one will be equal to the square root of the cube root of 27. Why? 
because 27 here is a perfect cube in which we have the square root of the cube root of 3 cubes in which 3 cubes here is equal to 27. So let us now simplify the answer will be the square root of 3. Now, let us simplify the following. First, we have here 2 square root of 50 x cubed. So from here, let us apply the first law in which this one is equal to 2 square root of 50 times square root of x cubed. Now, let us have the factors of 50 and x cubed in which we can easily simplify the 2. Now, let us have the factors of 50 and x cubed in which one of the exponent of each should be 2 as per the index. So, we have here 2 is square root of 5 squared times 2. So, since 5 squared is equal to 25 times 2 is equal to 50, then we can consider this expression times square root of x squared times x. x squared times x is equal to x cubed. Now, let us simplify this one by applying the first law in which it says that if our index and exponent is equal, then let us consider their base. So, we have 2 times 5 from here times x from here times square root of 2 times x. And 2 times 5 is equal to 10x square root of 2x. And this is the answer. Next example, we have the square root of 4x cubed, y raised to 6, z raised to 10. So instead of separating each expression, let us just simplify this one by getting an exponent in which it is equal to as per the index in number 2. So from here, it will be equal to 2 squared for 4 times x times x squared in which x times x squared is equal to x cubed. So again, we just get an exponent of 2 for us to easily simplify this radical expression. And y raised to 3 raised to 2 is equal to y raised to 6. And z raised to 5 raised to 2 is equal to z raised to 10. So from here, let us apply our first law in which if the index and the exponent is equal, then let us consider their base. Therefore, the answer for this one will be 2xy cubed z raised to 5 is square root of x. So from here, we get obtain 2, we obtain x, we obtain y cubed, and we obtain z raised to 5. And since we can simplify or find the square root of x, then let leave it as is. Therefore, that is the final answer. Let us have the third one. We have 28 root of 32, m raised to 15, n raised to 5. So let us simplify 32 here by rewriting it into exponential form in which 32 is equal to 2 raised to 5. So if you notice now, our exponents are all divisible by 5. Therefore, let us reduce the index by using our last law. So from here, it will be equal to the fourth root of the fifth root of 2 raised to 5, m raised to 15, and raised to 5. So it means that 4 times 5 is still equal to 20. Let us simplify first the m raised to 15, which is equal to m cubed raised to 5. So we have here these expressions. Now that our exponents are all equal to 5, therefore our final answer will be the fourth root of 2 m cubed n. We just consider the basis here in which their exponent is equal to 5. And that is the answer. So let us have our last example. So we have the fourth root of 81 over x raised to 8. So let us simplify this one by obtaining the exponential form of 81 in which the exponent is equal to our index which is 4. Therefore, we have the fourth root of 3 raised to 4 and 3 raised to 4 is equal to 81 over x squared raised to 4 in which x squared raised to 4 is equal to x raised to 8. Our answer will be 3 over x squared and that is how we simplify radical expression. That's it for our video. Thank you for watching. See you again in my next video.
Tchau. Bye.